We don't have time for any sort of lengthy intro for this video because as you can tell at the bottom, it's going to be a long one. Grab some snacks, fold some laundry, you know, do something, do something while you watch and listen to me vlog reading the entire Addicted slash Callaway Sister series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. 10 books, I've logged them all. I just finished Some Kind of Perfect, so I'm just wrapping this up video now, but also doing this intro at the same time, and I am in pain. I am in immense pain after this. There will be spoilers ahead. I cover every single book, all my thoughts, feelings, emotions, lots of cry sessions throughout this 10 book series. And at the very end, I will be ranking every book from my favorite to least favorite. So here are my thoughts throughout the way. At the end, we'll rank them. And yeah, let's jump in. My hair looks insane. We're not gonna talk about it. I'm not doing anything this whole weekend. So I washed it last night and I'm not heat styling it. So I just braided it back and pulled it into some buns back here. I'm four chapters in to Addicted and I'm really liking it so far. I'm really, really liking it. I'm loving the fact that both of these characters are like both very sad. Like they're both sad people. I get that already that they like are not happy with their lives and the way that they're going. And with them both having an addiction and then seeing how they interact with each other with those it's just an interesting dynamic and I'm getting vibes this is going to be extremely character driven which I love and I just want to see these two go on a journey of healing over time like when Lily had to wake up low from a bender that he went on and was like super drunk and she had to like drag him into the shower and like wash him and almost like dress him and just like how like how far they're both willing to go for each other and willing to go to cover up their addictions for each other. It's a ride or die dynamic and I'm really liking it so far. I'm into it. I was just about to sit up and do a check-in and then this boy came and started snuggling. So we're gonna do this laying down so that way I don't have to move him because he just looks so cute. I'm 62% of the way through um, addicted to you and I just finished the Halloween scene and everything and so now we're introduced to Connor and Rike and those are the two other dudes in the series right like I'm pretty sure Connor obviously I think gets with Rose and then Rike I think he's with Daisy later on. These characters are going to hurt me. They are going to hurt me. I can just feel it. Love two characters struggling so, so hard. Like as much as I love my characters being happy, I also love them being in pain. And these two are in such a bad place. And it's not that they're supportive of it, but they also like feed into it. Like they let the other just delve farther and farther into their situations. And that's why then when Reich was like, if he has a serious problem, you aren't going to do anything about it. It's not normal that he should be doing this. And it's like, he's right. Reich is right. Like Lily's not going to do anything to stop him. And like, what will it take for one of them to stop the other? Okay, a little bit of a better angle quick. I still don't look good, but that's because it's the weekend and we don't get ready on the weekend. Also, yeah, that is America's Next Time Model playing on the background on mute. Because I just can't have my apartment without things going on in the background. <laughs> I'm now 76% of the way through. Like Lily and Lo are so bad for each other, but also they're like so good together. Good in like the way that I love watching them interact, but bad in the way that they're like really unhealthy for each other. And the fact that they don't really have any friends outside of each other is like a red flag. Like they need other people in their lives. They need other people around them, but they just don't. They don't have anyone really. However, now I am already, every scene that he's in now, I'm like looking forward to him interacting and that's Connor. I'm freaking loving him already and his and Rose's little interaction their little tiffed up in the apartment when then he asked her to go to Shakespeare with him I'm already screaming I cannot wait for their book I don't know what one it is in the order but already like I'm so excited for the two of them Reich I haven't really figured out yet like I do like him but I think obvious like I do think he has very good intentions obviously trying to get low sober and like help him out um, and obviously like him revealing that he doesn't drink and like his dad was an alcoholic, like it makes total sense why he is trying to like help them out. But I don't know, I guess I don't really have a good sense of like his personality yet as much as like Connor. Like I just, I love Connor's personality. And I don't remember who 
had messaged me when I had said that I was starting this series, but they were like, you're totally gonna love Connor. And now I like get why. I'm like, you know. Um, but I also really love Lo. I really like Lo. And I love Lily, like I love these characters and that's why I think they're really gonna hurt my feelings because I think they're going to put me through a lot of pain. Hoping to finish tonight, I have like an hour and 13 minutes left in the next book and now I'm at the dilemma of do I keep reading the eBooks or do I start buying paperbacks? Because <laughs> it's so, it's a lot of money. It's like whatever, how many books are in the series? Eight books, nine books? It's a lot of money to spend on paperbacks. But also I'm like, do I want to spend the money on the ebooks and the further and deeper I get into the series that then if I like love it so much, I'm going to end up buying paperbacks anyways and then I'm going to have spent money on ebooks. We're at that dilemma now, but we shall see. Conversation that Reich and Lily just had that had me questioning something. So Reich has only said that his dad is an alcoholic, but that he, we don't know like where his money comes from or like anything about his dad. And like really anything about his mom except that he lives with her and that he used to see his dad. No, that couldn't make sense because he said he saw him every week and I feel like that would be way too much to be. But I was like, is his dad Lowe's dad? Like, why is he so interested in Lowe? Why does he care so much? Why does he care so much about Jonathan Hale? Like, I don't know. I have a lot of questions about Reich and like what he's all about. What's his deal? I don't know. And like, are they potentially long lost brothers? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Probably not, but. I finished and I fucking loved it. I just know that this series is about to completely consume me and wreck me i feel like i do understand why some people don't like it or why people would think that it is overhyped because or like why some people might think that because it is character driven as fuck like really what is the plot outside of these two characters both having their own addictions and like feeding into that and like their journeys i will take a character driven story over a plot driven story any day of the week i'm already so attached to Lily and Lo. Like, I love each of them so much. I love the side characters. I was right. I was right that Reich is uh, Lo's brother. I love that at the end, you know, they're taking action. And I think they, like, both process their addictions in very, like, real ways. Lily is like, I can't, like, I have a problem. How am I supposed to live like this? Whatever. And then the next chapter, she's like... I'm fine. I don't need any help. Everything's fine. And I just think like that's a very realistic way of looking at things that she has like this very up and down relationship with it. And same with Lo too. And oh, the scene at the club when then like he's passed out and Lily is in the bathroom with that guy and he starts assaulting her and Connor and Reich both break in there and like help her out, get her out of that situation. But then even like hearing her try to rationalize it because she's like so deep into her own addiction that she can't like see, she can't like see her way out of it. And we haven't gotten a lot of Daisy yet, but I know so many people love Reich and Daisy. I did order the next two books on paperback. And now that I've read the first one, I have a feeling this is gonna be a new fave series for me. So I cannot wait to keep going with this series. Five stars for book one. It's the next morning after I finished Addicted to You. Now I haven't started book two or anything, but I just realized that I think I forgot to even mention this scene in my check-in yesterday. And that was at Rose's fashion show when Lily and Lo literally missed the whole thing because she had to go out to the car with him. Uh, that scene was so hard to read because it's really just showing like how absolutely like destructive Lily's addiction is to her life and to the people's lives around her like I think her and Lo think a lot of the times that like they only just affect each other but they really affect like so many people around them and it was kind of a change for us to see an excuse from Lo to people about Lily because like he tried to take the fall for it with her family where we've seen a lot of times Lily trying to defend Lo to people and being like oh it's his birthday he's just having a night out and it was just different to see him taking the blame for it instead of her. This is the first check-in for Ricochet, right? I don't think I've updated yet on this one. So I am now, I just got to February in the book, which is page eight, 
What page is that? 114. I'm almost halfway through because there is like some look into the next book at the end of this book. So it's not like all this book. It's feeling a little bit almost like a filler book. Like granted, I don't know what's coming in the next one, but the next one's like a lot thicker. So far, I mean, Lowe's at rehab in this one. So we're just with Lily right now. Like we don't know anything that's going on with Lowe. And I miss him. I miss their dynamic. I would like to have this maybe in dual perspective. Like I'm just waiting for her to start like kind of working through her shit and like us seeing that because so far we've gotten a lot of like Rose and Connor talking about like getting her help and like trying to find her a therapist and trying to get her help, which I just, I want that to start happening. I want to see her starting to heal the dinner that they had. So I just finished the like big dinner for Fizzle, like the soda company where their mother arranged dates for all of them and Reich came and like helped out Lily a little bit and even like Jonathan Hale kind of like helped her out a little bit when the dude that showed up was like trying to come on to Lily and was like I'll ruin you because like low fucked with him but then Jonathan kind of came in clutch and I was like we don't like Jonathan but in that situation thank you but the main thing with that dinner that's intriguing me so far is Rose and Rose's relationship with their mother and Rose and Connor specifically like I feel like this book is almost building up Rose and Connor more for me and like even Daisy we got Daisy and Lily at a party together. This book is fine so far, but I'm just wanting to get some healing for Lily. I want to see her working through some of her shit. I just miss the Lily and Lowe dynamic a lot in here. Okay, I finished Ricochet. So this was, I guess, a quicker book for check-ins, but probably a good thing because I have a feeling this video is going to be long as shit. So good thing that this only took two check-ins. I'm going to give this one three and a half stars. It was fine. I liked portions of it. I loved Lily's time in therapy. I thought that was great. I felt like I was in therapy with Lily. I loved those parts. I loved her and Lowe's phone calls. I loved her like getting to touch base with Rose more, you know, and like Rose's involvement and like then when she did her vows and like burned her whole stash of everything. I thought that was so great and love that Connor and Riker were both there to support too. But overall, I feel like this really was like a filler book, just like while Lowe's in rehab. It wasn't bad by any means. It's just, I don't think this was like anything super special in the story. And like even the flashbacks, like those were good, but also I'm like, do I need them? I don't know. So yeah, I'm excited to be done with this one and on to, I don't remember what the next one is. Is it Addicted After All? Anyways, I'm excited to jump into that one. Hey, I don't think I've checked in yet for Addicted for Now, but I'm only on chapter four so far for this. And so far already I'm liking it so much more than Ricochet because I'm just happy to have Lily and Lo back together because that's what I really felt was like lacking in that book. I understand why they had to be apart because obviously like he had to be in rehab. Like I, I understand. I just don't think I found the book as compelling when they weren't together. But now they're back. I'm interested to see how things go. I'm also loving that we're getting Lo's point of view as well. I think that's just going to be really strong throughout the book having both of their POVs and both of their thoughts especially now that they're both trying to be strong in their addictions. Love Rose and Connor once again. I'm so excited because I think Kiss the Sky is after this book but also not excited because it is April 10th when I'm making this and my Kiss the Sky copy doesn't come in like all of them don't come in until April 21st. But anyways, immediately with the text of the threatening thing, I immediately thought it was Aaron, but then they like went in low and Reich ended up going and confronting Aaron and it still could be him, but I do think that's kind of obvious, but I don't really know who else it would be. So I'm anxious to see how that all plays out. Okay, I just finished chapter 18. So I'm on chapter 19, page 169. And one sentence at the very end of this chapter that like, it just like blared out of my head when I read it was when Lo talked about, he was filling everyone in about the rival we, rivalry with Aaron Wells and how him and Jonathan, his dad, like ruined his potential lacrosse career or whatever. Mike said like, our dad helped you with that. And Lo was like, that's how we bonded kind of like bitterly. And I... I just really hope that especially now that we have Lowe's POV, we get so much more into his relationship with his dad because we saw a little bit of it in the first book of more of flashbacks through like Lily's point of view between Lowe and his dad. But I want to see like a firsthand account what Lowe thinks about his dad. Because that right there of like that's how they bonded was ruining people's lives. Like that's not normal shit. Okay, I'm on chapter 36. I'm like over halfway through the book now. And... 
This isn't really even much about Lily and Lo, more so I am so excited for Kiss the Sky. I'm just so excited for more Rose and Connor. Every single one of their interactions has me being like, can we focus on them for a while? The scene in the club, all the girls just drank, or not all of them, Rose and Daisy just drank absinthe and they don't know that. Connor and Lo were having a conversation up in the balcony and they were just kind of getting to know or more like Lo was getting to know Connor a little bit more so then like we got to know about Connor more and like his background with Rose and the fact that he didn't know that she was a virgin and I just can't wait like I love Connor so much already. Reich I'm like kind of fucking over I don't know he's like I don't know he's just kind of there but I'm really here for the bromance brewing between Lo and Connor. Is this just me? But so Lo was talking about his name and how he used to get teased for having a girl's name with it being Lauren. Am I the only one who loves that name for a dude? And also recently after reading Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, Lord Ashley Cutler is a dude in there. And I actually, the, like the more I thought about it, reading it, I'm like, I love the name Ashley for a dude. I'm very excited to see how this club scene plays out because I also want, as much as Lo wants to see Rose drunk I want to see Rose drunk I can't hold the book up and do a check-in because we're playing right now so the kitties are always my priority so we're gonna keep playing but shit just hit the fan uh I just finished chapter 37 and it got leaked about Lily being a sex addict and having that out in the world now like I feel like I'm at this point where like I can't put this book down and just the reaction on the plane one having it happen on the plane like just in that situation of them all flying and all being stuck in this like small little environment finding this out hi Oh, do you just want pets? Okay, I can pet you instead. Oh, Dorian, don't be an asshole. I love Rose stomping out of the bedroom, taking the phone from Daisy and putting their mother in their place. The other thing that I really loved in this situation was Reich at the end when he was talking to Lily, um, when she said, like, make sure you watch out for Lo, you know, like whatever happens. And he was like, well, you'll be here for him and whatever. And he made a great point to her where she was like, you know, I owe it to my parents. And he was like, you don't owe them shit. Like, they are the ones who failed you. They didn't question why you never came around, why you locked yourself up in your apartment, where you were, what you were doing. Like, they really don't give a fuck about you. So, like, you don't owe them anything. And I'm like, Reich coming in with the facts because he's totally right. Lily and Love really don't owe their parents anything. Like, what? Because they provided for them. Like, that's what parents are just supposed to do. Like, you're supposed to provide for your children. I'm really interested to see how this affects Lo in his addiction because he's been, like, doing well recently. And, like, they both just thought Mexico was such a win for them. And then to, like, be on that high and then have this come in and, like, completely <laughs> throw them off. I'm interested to see how things go. I didn't think this was gonna be a crying vlog. I don't really even know if you can tell. It was just a few tears. But Lo just met his mother. That confrontation was hard to read. I just love Lo. I love a character who's in pain and oh, is he in pain. Hearing him say that he wishes that she would have gone through with getting rid of him when he before he was born. <sighs> I just want all the good things for Lily and Lo. I just got home. It was my nephew's second birthday. So I was over at my brother's family's house all day. I immediately changed out of my jeans. I, I unbuckled my belt in the car ride on the way home. And then I forgot that I did that. And then when I got to my apartment, there's never anyone on the elevator. And of course, a couple got on the elevator with me. And I was like, my belt is literally unbuckled. It is what it is. Anyways, but I got home. And I, even over at my brother's house, I was like, I just want to go. Like, when I get home tonight, like, I just want to get home. And I want to read Kiss the Sky. But they literally, like, the four new cover books that I ordered, they were all supposed to arrive next Friday, which is the day that I leave for vacation. So I'm like, it's going to take me forever until I get to read Kiss the Sky. So I was debating buying the ebook. And look what was here when I got home. So I am so excited. I'm literally going to start Kiss the Sky, like, right now like right now before i start this though we got a quick talk about the end of um is it addictive for now why can't i get that one right what one did i just read so i finished it last night again ended up giving that one five out of five stars i loved the whole like plot of them being blackmailed 
and like that whole situation and then it coming out and like the ramifications of that scene at the end with the bean reich's mom but like not super out of left field like i feel like that's actually like a pretty good person to have had it been rather than like aaron or some like random dude you know i don't like the fact that it was reich's mom because i think hot house flower i think that's one of Reich's books and I'm interested to see how he processes that and they all just have shitty ass parents like let's be real no one's parents in here are good except me I don't know Connor like we really don't know Connor's family at all I liked Jonathan's involvement actually a lot in Addicted for Now and I liked that Reich was able to call out and be like he's literally abusive to you Lo and for Lo to be like yeah you know he is in Lo's confrontation with his mom like oh that book just had so many good moments in it I do think the beginning was kind of slow but like I loved the Mexico trip I loved Lily again going to therapy her new therapist that her parents got fucking crust of the world Ugh. I'm glad that at the end she went back to her old therapist because we love whoever she is because she's actually helpful go women I am just really excited to start kiss the sky I'm loving this series I am 120 pages into Kiss the Sky and I'm loving the like reality TV plot line with this. I think that's really interesting and I like the forced proximity then of all six of them under the same roof. I love the insights into Rose and Connor already. I'm gonna call it right now. I think they're gonna be my favorite couple out of the three. Like I know I still haven't even gotten like a Daisy and Reich book so far and as much as I've loved Lily and Lo, I just like feel Connor and Rose like inside of me. Connor is by far my favorite dude. There's literally not gonna be a question about that. And I think Rose is gonna be my favorite sister. But here's the one thing that I don't like and that's Scott in this because I, I haven't even read this series. I don't know any spoilers, but I know for damn sure he doesn't end up with Rose. So at this point, I don't love love triangles where the one, it's like so blatantly obvious of who's gonna be chosen and the other one is just in there to like mess things up a bit. Like I love a love triangle where like it genuinely feels like someone is an option where there's just literally like, it's not gonna be him no way shape or form so i say i don't like scott i really like he just annoys the shit out of me i love connor so much already but then when he stepped in for rose and switched the like lap dance to him having to give it to her rather than her giving it to him my heart just like died for him the fact that he knew how uncomfortable that it would make rose and he could see that and he was like i'm not gonna let that happen to her i'm gonna do it myself <gasps> i just i'm obsessed with him i'm obsessed with him I cannot be bothered to sit up for this and I have to talk kind of quietly because both of the cats are sleeping and they will get up if they hear me talking and demand laser light time. I'm going to call it right here. This book right here is going to be one of my favorite books I read all year. This is phenomenal. Like I loved the first book, Ricochet was like all right, loved the third book, but this, this is the first book in the series where I felt like I literally can't, like I am in love with it. And you know how I just said in one of the last check-ins how much I hated Scott in this book? The only part of Scott's character that I'm liking now at this point is what he's doing for Reich and Daisy, how now he's kind of like turned his attention to Daisy and Reich is like back the fuck up. I'm loving that for Reich. I'm enjoying Reich more. I obviously there have been tons of like Daisy and Reich vibes but I'm starting to get more of him being like less of an asshole. I feel like I'm more of like a he's always been protective over her. I don't know how to explain my change of heart towards him so far but I don't know. I'm just liking my Reich more now and i think it's because of like watching scott just be in it i like i want scott to just like fucking leave i hate scott especially how he's like i own you all fuck off fuck off in your dishwater blonde hair if they describe his hair one more time done i don't know if you can tell if you can tell that i've been crying but i was I just finished this book and I tr I don't even remember the last time that I checked in. I truly don't see a book topping this one in this series. No one. I don't care how much everyone loves Reich and Daisy. There is not a chance in hell that I will end up liking them more than Connor and Rose. Connor and Rose are, when I say this, it sounds dramatic, but it is. They are truly one of my favorite fictional couples of all time. I loved them individually. 
I loved them together. I loved their intelligence, their banter, their chemistry, their respect for one another. I literally can't get over these two. I love them so much. And the ending of this book was perfect. Every I loved the character development. I loved the relationship development. I loved the relation, like the side relationships, like the bromance between the three dudes. I love the sisterly love that these three have for each other. The group dynamics, especially after this first sex tape came out and like Lo was kind of teasing rose a little bit like I just love that they're all at that level with each other and speaking of the sex tape let's talk about it quick I loved how Connor and Rose's dynamic worked inside and outside of the bedroom it was just literally perfection these two characters just like felt certain parts of them like deep inside my soul and I literally, like, I feel like, you know, when you just read a book and you just know that it's going to be like a comfort book for you, that is this book. I feel like I'm going to reread this book very frequently. Like, I already want to go back and restart it. I don't even want to jump into Hot House Flower, which I'm very excited for. So good. I literally, like, I just, I, I can't express how much I just love Connor and Rose and I need to just shut up about it. So anyways, um, I know I'm not even, am I halfway through? No, I'm not even halfway through. This is only the fourth. I'm telling you right now, this book is not going to be topped. Unless if potentially by, is it Fuel the Fire? I think that's their other book. Potentially that one. But literally, this is not going to be topped. I haven't felt like this connect, this like personally connected to two characters before in such a long time. Like it's just been, like I've read amazing books this year, but I've never felt like personally connected to characters like this. And oh, I just fucking loved it. I've officially descended into Razy territory here. I have gotten so many DMs of people saying that they're so excited <laughs> that I've started this one that everyone's been looking forward to me reading, Rike and Daisy. I'm excited for this book. I definitely am, but I really don't think they're gonna top Rose and Connor for me, but we'll see. I'll keep an open mind. Main thing about this book already, so right off the bat at the beginning, um, obviously it had to jump time a little bit, but Lo has relapsed in his addiction. Where was that? I was like, am I missing? Was I supposed to read Thrive instead? I was wondering if like maybe I jumped a book or something. So I don't know. I hope that then, I don't know what the timeline of Thrive, that's the next one, right? Yeah, I don't know what the timeline of that follows, but I want to see that. Like, I want to see Lowe's struggles. So, I don't know. I hope that we don't, like, just gloss over that in this book. And then, like, in that book, he's back to being fine. I guess I'm just intrigued. Especially from the author's note at the beginning of this. It was kind of, like, ambiguous about this book. I don't know. It was an interesting author's note. So, yeah, I'm excited. This is so good. This is so good. Okay, I have to put it down because Arya's right here. And she needs some pets. So I am on chapter 26. I'm almost like halfway through the book and I'm going to try to finish it tonight because uh, I leave on vacation tomorrow and I don't want to bring it with me because I want to keep it like in pristine condition. I know that sounds dumb. And also I don't want to take a book on vacation that I have only that like have halfway through left to read. Like I want to only take like full unread books because I'm only taking two and then my Kindle. So I don't want to take it with me. So I want to finish it tonight. It is so fucking good. The way that Reich instantly hopped on a plane for Daisy. Insane. Daisy's night terror scene. <gasps> I love the nightmare trope. I love the nightmare trope. It's up there with the who did this to you trope for me. Love that Connor and Lo went to because I just love the three of them. I've said it before. I love their bromance. I will take any scene that I can get with Richard Connor Cobalt, okay? Even like when Ryle, I love his like God complex. <laughs> when I think was it Reich that said like, oh, thank God. And then Connor was like, God's not in the room when I'm here. I was like, bitch, I love you. I love you. I'm really liking Daisy more in this book. I think obviously like we're getting in her perspective, but I just like seeing how things have affected her. Already it's been like hinted at that she feels disconnected from her sisters. And then with everything that's come out, like we've never really seen how that's affected her. So I'm liking that we're getting that. After the riot scene where Wright got separated from her and then found her and then ran her to the hospital. Hello game plan. <laughs> 
Y'all remember that movie with The Rock? I just, I'm fucking loving Rike and I did not, it's not that I didn't like him. I mean, maybe I said earlier in this video that I didn't. Rike, I'm like kind of fucking over. I don't know. It's just that he has not been my favorite. I think he's been fine, but I am loving him in this. And oh my God, how did I completely forget the scene where he literally broke his nine years of sobriety because of Lo and that Lo just sat there and let him did do that. Like, oh my God, I wanted to like yell at Lo, but at the same time, I'm like, but I don't want to because you're hurting too. That scene in the bar was hard to see Reich break his, sobri break his sobriety that way. Ah, oh, this is so fucking good. Reich and Lo's fight, oh my God. I love these brothers. Also, oh my God, my bangs look fucking atrocious. Yeah, it's late at fucking night, y'all. <laughs> Lo and Reich's fight. And when Lo said, why can't you love me more than you hate Jonathan, their dad? I was like, oh my God. And here's the thing. I I love Lo. I really, really do. I just, he's so sad. And when Reich was like, he wants me to hit him because he thinks he like deserves to feel pain. And like, he wants that pain over all of the emotions that he feels inside and he doesn't know how to deal with. And it's like, oh, that scene was so good. I think it did so much for their relationship. And then right at the end, I'm just about to jump into the next chapter. I think they know about Daisy and Reich, which I want that out in the open. I like them sneaking around, but I don't want to put it off any longer. Like, let's let's air this shit out, y'all. Let's get it out there. Knew that Rose was pregnant. I called that. I do wish that we were in her POV for this. Like, I would like to see how she was like processing all of that. Kind of like with Lo and his relapse, like I would have liked to have seen Lowe's POV for that, but I guess like I like that we're getting it in this book, obviously. Reich just started his climb, but I just had to say once again, Rose and Connor, they cannot be topped. Even them, the smallest paragraph of them just sitting in the woods and how Rose has on like designer sunglasses tells Reich that she'll hug him when he gets back for something to look forward to and Connor in like his expensive suit. I just, I can't with the two of them. I'm gonna start getting ready here, but real quick, I'm just gonna wrap up Hot House Flower because I did finish. Totally understand why so many people are obsessed with Reich and Daisy. No, they still don't be Connor in my book, but they were fucking amazing. I loved them so much. Loved the ending of that book. Okay, so what did I even touch base on last? I don't think Reich had even gotten arrested at that point. What the f fuck you, Samantha Cal Calloway. I hate her for like a multitude of reasons, like how she treats Lily, how she treats, treats Rose, how she treats Daisy, like just across the board. But then having Reich arrested, fuck you. You're gonna have to do a lot to get back into my good graces. Same with Jonathan Hale, just because you're trying to make moves with Reich and getting sober for him and Lo, which love that for you, congratulations. You still got a long way to go. So I love that we got more with their father though, that we're maybe progressing somewhere with those, with that relationship with Lo, Reich and Jonathan. I cried when Lily told Lo that she was pregnant and she was in the shower having like just a moment and Lo climbed in the shower with her, how he like consoled her and her worry of telling him that she was pregnant and stuff. Cause like, all all warranted. I totally get why she was. Now that her and Rose are both pregnant, I'm interested to see how things go. Although I'm worried that we're not really going to get like any of Rose's pregnancy from her POV because the next two books are Lily and Lo books. So unless if that like all takes place in less than nine months or seven months, because they're both two months long or something, I'm really nervous about that. I loved the ending with Reich and Dizzy. I just think like they, they're so right. I feel the fifth wheel element. I'm always the fifth fucking wheel or third wheel or whatever in my friend group. So I totally feel that they're like, we finally went from being like the fifth wheels to them to being like a part of the group. And I love that for them. I will jump back in when I get back from vacation, but I'm really, really excited. I definitely think that that book is going to end up like near the top of my ranking at the end of this video because I there wasn't really a part of it that I didn't love and it definitely made me love uh Reich a lot more because I didn't like I didn't dislike him but I also didn't love him in the other books but it really changed my opinion on him we are back with Lily and Lo and I'm so happy I'm so happy to be back with them however so I am on chapter 15 I'm on page 137 of Thrive and 
This book is retelling Kiss the Sky or like following the same timeline, but from Lily and Lowe's point of view, which I like because I know when I was updating through Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower, there were certain moments where I'm like, I wish I was seeing this from Lily and Lowe's point of view because there were like big things that were happening with like Lowe's sobriety and like relapsing and drinking and Lily's pregnancy later on that I'm like, I want to see from their point of view. So I'm glad that we're getting that. But at the same time, certain parts, I'm like, I we can kind of gloss over some things. Like we already know this. Like when they're setting up for the TV show, it's like, we already know this. We aren't really getting any new information. So I like it, but um, I'm more interested to get more into the heart of the book when we're going to be dealing with some of the bigger events of the story. One thing that I'm really liking, again, obviously in Hot House Flower, we got a lot of Rike and Lowe's relationship, but I really like in this, just getting into Lowe's mindset of like when he is low and how much he relies on Rike and that only makes like Daisy and Rike dating and like that conflict even richer, I think, to know that, you know, <laughs> Hi. Hello, little bean. Just like seeing how much Lo really does rely on Reich to help with his sobriety journey makes their conflicts like even better because there is such like a deep trust between the two of them that even though I was like for Reich and Daisy together, it did like violate Lo's trust. So, y'all. Stop. I just got to the chapter where I'm pretty sure this is the one in Kiss the Sky where Lily and Lo were in the bathroom and it was edited to make it look like it was something that it wasn't. And they like said that it, you know, that nothing happened in there, that they were just like hiding out for a while, but it was still kind of like, are they telling the truth? And it was good to see that they are, that they were telling the truth in that moment because it is like from their perspective, <laughs> From their perspective I you can see how frustrating it is for them to constantly have their relationship put on blast and like while every single detail about their relationship has to be out in the open with everyone but everyone else can be like secretive about theirs and like that sucks at the same time in order for them to both work on their sobrieties they need to like be able to be open and honest with each other with each other and everyone else and you can see already in this how they're starting to keep secrets just the two of them again because it's so natural for them to fall back into that habit i just really like the way that their addictions are both written also i don't know if i've really talked about lo and rose's relationship but i love any time that they interact and especially lo and connor like i just like their dynamics together i think one of the reasons that i'm such a sucker for lo is i'm just a sucker for characters who push everyone away before they can like really hurt them because they just can't fathom being hurt by anyone that they love. Lo just sometimes makes me so sad when I see him doing that because it's like I know what you're doing. You're trying to push everyone away before they can hurt you but you, like you're only hurting yourself and oh, it's just so good. And also I just love how nerdy Lily and Lo are. Especially when Lily said that she just read Arya's chapters from Game of Thrones. I mean I literally oh where is she? Oh there she is. In that bottom, I literally named my cat Arya because Arya Stark fucking rocks. I'm on chapter 49 and it's the part where the accusations against Jonathan came out and Lo drinks and passes out in the kitchen and then he has to be rushed to the hospital and not saying that this is what I've been wanting, but in which book did he relapse in? Was it Hot House Flower? I think when we like knew that Lo was drinking again and I was like I want to get that from his POV because like I feel like that's important and I'm so glad that we're getting the, that in here especially because since the first book he's been sober you know like towards the end of the first book and then obviously in Ricochet he's in rehab and stuff but to see like you knew that at some point one of them was going to relapse some way or another it's like is either Lily gonna cheat or is Lo gonna drink and I've and I always kind of thought that it was going to be low because I don't think that Lily would have ever cheated on him. So to see him relapsing and breaking his sobriety is so hard, but I'm just so glad that we're getting it through Lowe's POV. I've said this before. I don't know what it is. I just love seeing my characters like at really low lows and going through pain. I, I'm sorry to them, but like I do really enjoy it. And I'm interested to see how it goes moving forward between Lily and Lowe directly, you know, and also everyone else around them especially like Reich. Oh, I'm making dinner right now and I'm so excited. I'm having just like pasta and meatballs, but this is the best store-bought pasta sauce ever. Like I won't hear otherwise. I'm too lazy to make homemade pasta sauce on a regular basis, but this right here, oh, amazing. I just finished Thrive and I loved it. I loved seeing some of the key moments from Lily and Lo's point of view that I was worried that we were gonna miss out on. The fight in Utah, that did so much to see it from Reich's point of view and then seeing it from Lo's point of view, seeing it from the both of them. 
absolutely incredible. I love seeing Rose and Lily both finding out that they were pregnant in the bathroom because obviously we didn't get that. That scene's in Hot House Flower and we didn't get that. So I love that in here. But they are true fucking soulmates. They just are meant to be. I love seeing how deeply they care for one another and how like they really can't function without each other. Like they really, it just like they need each other and it's so beautiful and I loved it. And now their last book is next, I think. So I'm probably gonna get started on that tonight because I'm impatient. And now I'm to the point where it's just like, I just want to finish this series. It's so fucking good, but I also don't want it to be done. I'm on chapter 19 of Addicted After All. So far, it's been kind of slow. However, I'm liking the yacht trip. It's very like full circle for Lily and Lowe from like the first book to this book. Connor and Lowe in another life would be partners. Right? That kiss in the club, I was, I was loving. I love their flirty bromance energy and I would really ship them. I really would. So I am on page 237. I'm on chapter 25. I love Rike coming to Lily's rescue at the lunch after she peed her pants. It's little things like that that I find like endearing in these books and that are just done so well is like the small subtle moments that aren't necessarily like moving the plot forward but they just like enrich the relationships between the characters done so well. Now I wanted to make a guess of who is going to be CEO of Hale Co because obviously it's got to be one of the four but here here's my working theory as of right now. I don't think it's going to be Lily or Lo because here's why. Then that would be wrapped up in this book you know and I feel like it could have more of a conflict moving forward so I'm thinking that it might be Daisy or Reich because they still have one more book and neither of them really have like careers going for them like Reich's a rock climber and I don't know what Daisy's doing Daisy's living her life whatever but neither of them really have set careers so this could cause like an interesting dynamic for them in their book and if it wrapped up with Lily and Lo at the end of this one like, I don't know. I just don't know if, like, we need that on top of them having a baby and I'm hoping having a wedding or getting married at some point. But we shall see. That's my guess as of right now. Obviously, I haven't seen, like, Reich or Lo have lunch with all the board members or whatever. But that's my prediction. I don't even like kids either. And Rose's birth is making me emotional. Okay, so I'm on page 380. I'm getting close-ish to the end here. Don't know if I'll finish tonight or not. Okay, how the fuck do you say this name? Is it Maximoff? Maximoff? I don't know. Uh, I think they're calling him Moffy. It's a choice. It's a choice. But I respect the fan names for it. I mean, I did the same shit with Dorian and Arya, Dorian Havilliard, Arya Stark, okay? Loved his birth. I loved how Lo was there for Lily every step of the way. A lot's happened, but also like not a lot has happened. One thing that I don't fucking like is that Jonathan is now apparently like kind of not blackmailing, but like threatening Connor to out him for sleeping with men in his past. Like they had a conversation and Lo asked like, are you bi? And Connor said, you know, I don't really like labels, but you know, like I've slept with men before. And like that he's just very fluid in his sexuality. I love that. I wish we got that earlier on in the book, earlier on in the series. But I don't like that Jonathan's like trying to do something with that. It's like Jonathan has just done so many fucked up things and every single time I feel like I might kind of be seeing a light with his character. Like feel like maybe he's starting to make progress on things. Then he does some shit like this and I'm like, you, are, are you just all around trash? Samantha, the girl's mom is just fucking trash. Not even holding their son and only holding Rose and Connor's daughter like bitch all the parents are bogus in this um and also that neighbor lady i would tussle you if i could in real life calling rose a porn star fuck you i'm getting close to the end and if i don't see a lily and low wedding i'm gonna be pissed i am so close to the end here but i just had to say before i forget i'm like i should say this for the final check-in for this book but i just need to say it and get it out there that i they were just having a conversation after the break-in when daisy was like you know i really love like the relationship that we've all grown and how lily and her mind was like i didn't know who Daisy was years ago and like how far we've come and that line hit me that was so true because in the first book 
Lily and Lo were so isolated from everyone around them. They had no clue who their own family members were and like having relationships with them. So to see them all like this core group of six be so close is very satisfying. Thank you, Aria, for <laughs> scratching your nails. And especially the sister's relationship grow over the course of all these books. And Daisy too, how she really always was kind of left out even as Daisy even as Lily and Rose were going close, growing closer, Daisy was always kind of on the outs. And I like seeing Daisy be more on the inner circle, you know? Am I crying at a fictional wedding? Yes. Have I ever cried at a wedding in my real life? No. Connor's words to them about being like the strongest people that they all know <sighs> kill me. And then their little like vows to each other. Oh my God. Okay. I literally only have like six pages left. I'm going to finish quick, but I just needed, needed y'all to witness this sorry if you can hear the rain my sound machine's already on i'm prepared to knock my ass out this was so good five stars potentially my favorite lily and low book i don't know tbd obviously by my final rankings i feel like this could have some recency bias because it was kind of slow in the beginning but i did really love the end we got so many special moments i feel like this honestly really tied up lily and low like with the perfect bow that their story could have had i'm surprised and not surprised that low god hail co um i mean obviously he was like i guess like the rightful heir to it so, like technically right would be too whatever i'm like not surprised but i'm also kind of surprised i really thought that, that might be like a storyline heading into daisy and reich's book i feel like this was just like a really beautiful ending for Lily and Lo. I'm sad to be leaving them, but obviously glad that I'm sure they will make a lot of appearances in the next two books. Already this prologue of Fuel the Fire is sending me. I am so happy to be back with Rose and Connor. I'm on pay or I'm on chapter 17. Not much has happened. Like I find that the beginning of these books are often like pretty slow I think because they're like character driven. It takes us a while to get into the story. Rose and Theo had their first kind of like interaction and Theo is one of Connor's exes. I want to like Theo. I want him to not end up sucking, but I am concerned about him ending up being shady. And Scott is back, the fucking producer. I hate him. I'm just annoyed that he's back, but we'll see how, like, I don't really know how that's gonna all play out. I don't think they're gonna do like another season. I think I had talked about in one of the check-ins for the other books, when I was talking about how Connor's been with guys before. And I said, I'm like, I wish that Rose would have like known that and like that we would have seen that in Kiss the Sky more. Um, and we're getting that more in here. So I am liking it that she's like actually known for years. I would have liked to have seen that more like throughout the story as a whole, but I'm obviously enjoying it now that we're getting in here. Same place, different day. I hope that Rose gets Sadie back soon. I get it. Everyone has their reasons with their animals. Sometimes like it is better off for the animals. My parents' dog, they adopted when she was two from a kill shelter in Kentucky because we don't know why she was raised in a home for two years and then dropped off there, whatever. And obviously now she lives the best spoiled life. She literally goes to doggy daycare. She's living the life. But these two, they're my entire life. I don't care if I find my dream man, if he is allergic allergic to cats throwing them away no it's not happening they are my number one priorities i hate when people like have children and then they just like completely forget about their pets or like ugh. i just i want sadie back i want her back i want all the good things for this cat i'm very invested in this cat i'm not usually the biggest fan of kids in books but i'm really enjoying seeing connor and rose's parents especially because rose was so like adamantly against motherhood and i think because I am adamantly against motherhood besides my kitties that I'm just liking seeing her in that role but not losing herself whatsoever. Connor just got the news that this story is going to break that apparently some of the guys that he used to sleep with are going to like be talking to the news outlets and it's going to get out like claiming that his and Rose's marriage is a sham and seeing Connor in that moment like immediately going into fix mode and thinking that like he can that he has the power to stop everything and that in this moment he doesn't and all he can do then when he realizes that the story is going to break is call his family home and him calling each and every person and them just dropping shit because they are there for each other no questions asked ride or die 
I love the fucking dynamic between the six of these characters. They just have each other's backs through thick and thin, no matter what, they never turn their backs on each other. And I just fucking love that kind of dynamic. I was trying to hold off until I was through the chapter, but I'm fucking fuming. I don't think I've ever hated Greg and Samantha, Rose's parents, more than I have in this chapter with Connor where after it was like leaked to the press that he slept with men before and they're all like having this big meeting to discuss how they're going to handle it. These two have been on my shit list since day one. Since day one. And they, I, don't, I truly have never disliked them more than I have in this moment. When they suggested that Jane might not be in a good environment with Rose and Connor, I'm sorry. What the fuck does him having slept with men in the past and not having a label on his sexuality have to do with the care that he and his wife are providing to their child? I'm just, oh, I'm so angry to have seen Connor outed. I'm so angry to see all of these fucking dipshits in the scene. Right now though, I am loving Reich just constantly pipe, piping up and saying like, fuck you all to everyone. And how even the publicist at one point turned to him and was like, if you're not gonna have anything constructive to say, you can leave. I love what an ally Reich is being in this moment. And that really everyone is being supportive minus like the fucking parents. Don't anyone come after Rose O'Connor, you hear me? I wish Reich would have never given this asshole a fucking liver. Should have let the bitch die. Should have let the bitch just die. I've said it before, I'm pretty sure, but literally all the parents in this book fucking suck. They all suck. I'm almost to page 400 and I just finished the chapter where Rose and Connor were trying to take Jane into the doctor's office and Rose got um, like caught, like part of her hair got caught on something in the mob of photographers and she ended up having to rip out a bunch of her hair in order to get her and Jane inside safely. Once they're inside, she's kind of like, in a bit of a state of shock. Obviously then that's when her OCD starts to kick in and she's looking around and she's thinking like, oh, I need to be fixing things. And just the way that Connor calms her down and reminds her that she is in control and you like see in Rose's mind her processing and saying like, even seeing the damage that is now done to her head, she's like, I would do it again if it meant protecting my child. I just love the way that her OCD has been discussed over Kiss the Sky and Feel the Fire, and then we're getting a little bit deeper into that and seeing it. Obviously, it like flares more with stressors, and Rose is clearly under a lot of stress in this book. Mm, I feel for Rose. I really do. But I was just a little teary-eyed because they're out at the cabin, and Daisy revealed that she thinks she's going to have to get both of her ovaries removed because she has cysts and endometriosis. Immediately, Rose offers up to carry a baby for her and Reich if she ends up having to go through this surgery and that she will help give them a child and I'm I'm continuously but not I'm like continuously blown away by the closeness of these relationships but also I'm like not surprised that Rose would offer that up she's an extremely selfless person especially when it comes to the people that she loves and she's very ride or die that was just a really sweet beautiful moment and I'm looking forward to seeing that play out more in the next book which is Daisy and Reich's last book and I'm just looking forward to seeing how they face this whether she does have to have the surgery or how that's going to kind of affect their future family planning I guess. I don't even know how many times I've cried during the series but <laughs> um, Connor just did his press conference and so I'm on chapter 55. That was so beautiful, especially at the end when he said that it's not, you know, like for, like for himself, he's good. That he hopes that Jane one day will understand and that her peers will understand. And just like, you know, hope for the younger generations and like that, I feel like that rings true. And today that you like only hope that acceptance grows more and more. Also when Reich gave him that book and pointed out the specific chapter before the press conference and about being like the unreasonable man who like drives change and like how that really touched Connor. And Reich is not going to be the one to give like some motivational speech, but Reich cares and Reich is a deep feeling kind of dude. And he knew what he was doing right there. Reich, I love you. One random thing that before Connor went out on stage, he like kind of mouthed off to the publicist guy a little bit. And I don't think I've ever pointed this out that 
Connor is ex like obviously Connor is extremely arrogant and when he says some things it could very easily lean into the direction of like ick I feel like but I never once get the ick factor with his confidence and cockiness and arrogance it always just works for me and I don't really know how that happens that way because normally I like really hate arrogant characters <laughs> but Richard Connor Cobalt can do no wrong and I just really really appreciate that Connor got his chance to say his piece. I just finished. Loved seeing Scott getting taken down. Piece of garbage. Absolute piece of garbage. Loved seeing Connor's calculations over the course of the book and the slow takedown. It paid off. Because I was like, we can't let him go free for what he did to Rose and Connor. And just for being a general piece of shit. So glad he got what was coming to him. Love seeing Rose have a fashion line back in a department store. Especially because that's where she started. Like wanting to have that more than anything that she was willing to put the family on TV for her dream. So love seeing her have that again. I would give this one five stars. I loved it. I do think it was slow in the beginning. Um, I didn't really care about Willow and Garrison either. Like that storyline, I was kind of like, I don't really care. So it did kind of seem like a bit of a waste at times with that. I don't know, maybe they become bigger in other books, but there were certain things in here where like it by no means beat Kiss the Sky for me, but overall I thought it was really solid and I will just take any time that I can get spent with Connor and Rose. I'm hoping to have this up next Wednesday. I'm very excited for a Long Way Down. Oh my God, am I matching with the book? Cute, I do love this color. That's a very pretty color of purple. I literally only just finished the prologue, but I just wanna say that I love how this one opened with a prologue of a flashback between like a pivotal moment kind of for Daisy and Reich, like Feel the Fire flashback with a moment for Rose and Connor. I think that that's really like a cool way to start this out, especially since it's their final book. Just seeing them, both of these couples at the beginning, knowing that this is like their end. <sighs> There's like something poetic about that. And just in this one little flashback alone that I'm really, really hoping that we dive into more with Daisy is just how she's always had this loneliness about her and this sadness that she really covers up and how Reich sees that. And there's even this line, they're about to bungee jump and she's saying, you know, like if she wasn't here, that uh that you know like life could take her away at any moment and that reich would still be here with another girl calling her sweetheart whatever he says like that's not funny and she says like you'd call her sweetheart too and it says that like reich saw it that she would have been all right with dying that like punched me in the gut like i felt that you know like when you talk about books making you feel something like i fucking felt that i'm already feeling like this is gonna be an emotional time with the two of them also i love that the the note from the author is first off but then the note from reich just to fuck off best best note ever we are not even that far into this and we have so much to unpack already so i'm only on chapter five I loved D Reich's proposal to Daisy. That was so cute, especially when he said that, you know, he's been alone for his whole life. I just love seeing lonely people find their people, you know? Jonathan showing up to ask Reich for advice. Literally, fuck you, Jonathan. I, I don't, mm, I will never fuck with you. I'm so over him just like being around and these characters giving him chances. I don't give a fuck about him. Also, I don't care that Willow is Reich and Lowe's sister. I really don't. And lastly, Cleo and Harper. Again, why are we giving toxic, shitty people chance after chance i will not saying that daisy's giving them a chance but i feel like they wouldn't show up if they weren't going to be in this book more kind of like scott showing up and fuel the fire like literally no i don't care that you've had time to grow up Oop. i was trying to do like parenthesis to do like air quotes grow up i don't care i don't fucking care i am on page 304 chapter 33 so i'm like almost halfway through i think because why i haven't updated is because i don't really have much to say i guess on it it's good i'm enjoying it like the rest of the books the beginning is kind of slow but we're definitely getting further into it i think i've already updated on like daisy and reich's fertility issues and like them going to the doctor and like her needing surgery and stuff honestly like since that not a whole lot has happened that i feel that like i really feel the need to like discuss the flower bombing things fine i don't know it's okay it's just hard to like imagine 
people like hating them so viciously just for not wanting to do a second season. I don't know. I did really like on New Year's Eve though, when Daisy got hit in the face with flour and like had that panic attack in the flashback to the Paris riots. I think that is really strong in here and like seeing Daisy struggle, her immediately needing to call Frederick and just knowing how she needs to cope with her mental health and that she's like kind of on top of it and how supportive Reich is. I just think their bond is super strong and that's carrying this book, but I don't really have much to comment on within that bond. Like there haven't really been any like huge devastating events. Rose is pregnant again, love that. I hope to see Daisy and Reich get married in this book. Hope to see them become parents potentially, or at least like have a plan for that because it's clearly something they both want. I'm nervous about Reich having some sort of like climbing accident because there's been so much talk about him climbing and people being against him climbing and how dangerous it is. And he just had that meeting with Fizz where they were like, we'll give you $10 million, do the super hard mountain without any safety precautions, you know? Well, here's my crying check-in for a long way down. <laughs> It's always the vows. It's the vows that get me once again. Never cried at a wedding in real life, but these characters getting married gets me going. I'm so glad that we got to see oh, Rike and Daisy's wedding. Also, I didn't even update after finding out that Daisy was pregnant and I started tearing up in that scene too, mostly because Rike was um, crying too in that scene. Oh, so satisfying to see these characters have come so far and speaking of that when when lily was walking down the aisle and reich just said like he'd never seen her that happy and like that content and like doing so well and like her self-confidence and stuff and he said like i'm proud of you lil like in his head to himself oh it's like i'm proud of her too and i'm proud of all of you i have like 220 pages left starting to like sink in for me that this is like my final my final time with them i know i have the epilogue book but like this is like the end of the series, you know? And I just, I don't want it to be done. Dorian, <laughs> he knows mom's sad, but it's okay, mom's just sad at a book. So you're good now? I don't know if you can tell, I have been like genuinely sad. <laughs> so I don't even know what, I think I'm on page like 440 or something. Reich and Sully were climbing, you know, obviously there's the accident. And it was like on the wall in the moment that like was starting to get me going because I knew that something bad was going to happen. And I obviously, even then when we're with Daisy and Lo and Connor at the diner, and then when they see the news that there was an accident, I never once thought that Reich was actually dead because I just, I knew that he wasn't gonna fucking die. That doesn't mean that I still didn't get all emotional about that. When Reich wakes up and him and Daisy are talking, whatever, all good. But then when he's talking about remembering the descent in with Sully and how he like carried him that whole way. I mean, Reich is just, even just endangering his life so much to try to save his friend. And then obviously then when he was down at the bottom and said that like he couldn't do anything and how he was like hunched over his friend's body. Like, oh, I just, I love perilous situations in books. Oh, I'm really sad about Sully. And now Reich with his broken leg, like if he'll ever, I'm assuming he, well, I don't know. I would like for him to climb like one more time maybe to like reach the summit for Sully. Cause especially he said, he's like, we were so close to the top. So maybe do something like that. But I also don't want him climbing. But, and also thank God the baby's okay. If they lost the baby and also lost Sully at the same time. No, no, I would not be okay. I am on chapter uh, 56, page 509. Rose had her twins, boys, so I'm assuming they're going to keep having more kids, probably in the epilogue novel. I'm interested to see how many they actually have because they've always talked about eight. I'm gonna guess six. I'm gonna guess six. Five. Mm, six. I like the even numbers. I like it being then eight all together with her and Connor. Another thing I'm really liking seeing Reich and Lo switch places in this book because Reich has always been that person to keep Lo on track in his sobriety and making sure that he's like doing things to keep busy and staying on top of his health and really watching out for him. And we've always seen Reich in that role. And now in this situation, Reich is in Lowe's role where he's like pretty down, really struggling. And Lowe has to step in and like put his foot down and be like, no, you're going to do this. You're going to listen to me and I'm not going anywhere and you're going to get better. And I just like seeing that role reverse reversal and that Lowe is able to kind of pay back some of the favors that Reich has done him over the years. I just feel like for Lowe, if we had this in his POV, I feel like he would feel really satisfied with getting to like give Reich 
even a fraction of what Reich has given him. It's the end of the night. I'm so <laughs> tired. I finally finished Long Way Down. Not finally. It's not like this book has taken me a long time to read. I think it's just because I've been so busy this week. I haven't read it in a while. I don't know why with this book, I didn't really feel like I had that many thoughts along the way to be honest i didn't feel like i had a lot of opinions i still gave it five stars i would just say it's on the lower end of five stars i liked it but i think with this and like fuel the fire and addicted after all like those three books consecutively they're all good books i love them all but they all accomplished the same purpose all the couples got married all the couples had a baby and that was like those books. And I think Long Way Down was just so long. It was the longest of them all. It was 631 pages. And by the end, I was just kind of like, okay, I was just kind of ready to be done with it. Like I was like, okay, I feel like we're in a good place. We've gotten this stuff sorted out. Can we just like kind of be done, I guess. Not that I wasn't enjoying it. It just like, it felt long by the end of it. I liked obviously Daisy having their daughter and them both being okay, obviously like, a perilous situation again in this book but y'all know I enjoyed that. Really honestly my favorite part about the end of the book was um the fact that Reich is climbing again and that he climbed and then was able to like leave some of Sully's ashes at the top of whatever he climbed and just seeing that he did that again I was hoping that he would. I was hoping that it wasn't going to be the end of his climbing even if it is in a more like safe way of not doing like the so free climb, solo climb, whatever. But I was glad that he was able to do that. Would have liked to actually have seen a scene with his parents of Reich talking to Sally's parents. And I don't know, even if it was just a small scene of them maybe like telling him about the ashes or maybe them like thanking them for thanking Reich for getting their son down, even though it obviously like hurt Reich. I don't know, just some, some little scene with them. I would have liked to have seen. Oh my God, I missed the part about uh, Lily and Reich being bombed with a flower and cocaine bomb. What the fuck? <laughs> Obviously the epilogue was great, but kind of like even as I was reading that though, I'm like, I already know that I'm getting like a full epilogue book to look forward to next. I was like, yeah, this is good, but also I know that this isn't the end. So I didn't get like emotional reading it in any way. But yeah, I think that's it for Long Way Down. Like I said, nothing wrong with it. I enjoyed the whole book. It's just, it felt a little long. Okay, I'm on page 210, chapter 16, in Some Kind of Perfect. We are on the last book, y'all. Things have happened, but also like not a lot has happened. Nothing like overly dramatic or really stuff to comment on. It's a lot of them just like having small moments with each other, them having children. I definitely am loving just having these moments spent with them. And it does almost feel like a cool down from the rest of the series, you know? But I will say that so far we're 210 pages in and not really anything huge has happened so i hope that and i like i said i'm liking these parts with them but i'm hoping that i'm not gonna sit through 700 pages of them just kind of like having conversations you know while i do love that that could easily be 200 pages and done with so i'm hoping that something more happens to like tie this all together to make it more of like a solid story but We'll see as it goes. I don't want to say goodbye. I'm going to be very, very sad to say goodbye to these six characters. First cry in for this book. <laughs> I am once again asking for animal death to be included in any trigger warnings in books because I cannot fucking handle it. That just like ruined my whole night. Sadie dies, the cat, in chapter 19. So if that also really fucks you up, just skip chapter 19 because I wish I did not have to read that. Okay, Lowe's little speech at career day for Moffy was so fucking cute and just made me think of how far he's come. And like, I feel like he's like my personal friend. I feel proud of him and his success and just his strength and truly how much he cares for his son and that he's nothing like Jonathan and his relationship with Moffy truly is a priority in his life and something that he really values where Jonathan never gave a shit about his kid. And I love I've seen Rose and Reich in the vice principal's office and a few chapters back when Jane got called in and like roasting the vice, pr vice principal as they should and then Connor coming in and roasting her in a completely different way. 
love that for all three of them. Sorry if you can hear some background noise. I have my door open to get some fresh air in here because it's beautiful out today. I don't remember where I updated last last night, um, but if I didn't say it already, I loved that we got to see uh, Rose, Connor, Reich, and Daisy all discussing surrogacy and then going through that together. Even if it was like more brief, I would say, I did like that because in Long Way Down we did see that in the epilogue and I was like, I'd really like to see that. So I'm glad that we did. So I was getting teary-eyed at Rose and Connor's birth of their last daughter because just how far they've come and I love that we got the flashback of them in the library early on and like for their first kiss and like when they first when Rose first realized that like oh shit this is something and even in the birth then when she said that Connor had to like turn away from their other kids because he was like so emotional and he didn't want them to see him like that oh, Rose and Connor are so fucking special to me and I literally I don't I don't want to leave them like I love all six of them but I really really don't want to leave Rose and Connor ever i just finished chapter 47 and kids are fucking horrible they're fucking horrible fucking great rose and connor's sons are great for the solitary but reading about luna being bullied and harassed at that sleepover and then low and right kevin yo and like just knowing that they're not able to do anything to protect their kids it's like oh that's how i feel about the kitties <laughs> what if someone doesn't treat them like the absolute royalty that they are that got me feeling sad. Oh, I also forgot to say that Jonathan died. I didn't care. I don't care. I don't fucking like Jonathan. I don't forgive him for any of the shit that he has done over the course of these 10 books. Good riddance. That might sound mean, but honestly, I don't care. And also it's a fictional fucking character. I only cared more so seeing Lowe's reaction and how he struggled with that. But even then, I still like to see his strength and his resolve to always put Lily and his family above the temptation of alcohol. It's so once again, it shows how good of a fucking person Lauren Hale is. I started getting teary-eyed the second that the chapters went from saying like chapter 18, chapter whatever, to Rose and Connor having two chapters that said farewell and Rike and Daisy having one that said like so long and then Lily and Lowe saying goodbye. I feel like I know these characters. I feel like I know them so deep inside my soul. This is the end, like I'm done. I mean, I know it's not the end. I know there's the like us series and I definitely plan on reading that at some point. I give it five stars. Um, I do think in parts it was slow, but honestly I think like just the time spent with them in the small moments is so strong and like what I needed to wind down from the series. This was like a perfect farewell to these six characters and i truly truly loved it I'm so sad to say goodbye i'm so sad to say goodbye okay that was a ride if you are still here with me thank you for sticking around or if you just jumped ahead to catch my rankings as well that's cool too you know whatever you gotta do i obviously loved the absolute hell out of this series uh one of these books in particular is like literally one of my favorite books i've ever read of all time this series i think you will be seeing again on some lists wrapping out the end of the year i do want to rank them though from least favorite to favorite obviously all of them i gave five stars except for one so obviously you'll see that one down at the bottom so just in my way of ranking these I still rated them all the same it's just certain ones had certain more levels of enjoyment for me and yeah I'm not gonna go super in depth on this because obviously this video is already super fucking long so like I'm gonna keep myself to like a sentence or two in 10th place my least favorite book out of them all is obviously Ricochet this is the second book in the series it was fine it felt like a filler book I really missed low and yeah there just wasn't that much to it so yeah it was number 10 at number nine even though I loved it and it made me cry so much is some kind of perfect this is the perfect conclusion to the series obviously we're in five star territory here I loved all these books but in the grand scheme of things this didn't have much overarching plot wise it was just a lot of like looks in with their kids and while I loved that I loved the other books more so this does round out at number nine but I do think that it was like the perfect epilogue novel ever to this series number eight long way down which is Daisy and Reich's second book this is book uh nine I did really like this book there were certain moments that I really really loved but overall I do think that it was just like too long I thought it was like a little too stretched out but I did love the extra time with Reich and Daisy because I do love them. And I did love some of like the perilous events in here. I love, I love a moment of peril. And number seven, everyone coming in number seven is Thrive. I loved this book. I really, really did. And I actually thought it might be higher. However, because it just retells 
the events from two other books, but from Lily and Lowe's point of view, I did have to put it a little bit lower. Even though I did really love seeing key events from Lily and Lowe's point of view, it did almost feel like repetitive at certain times. So I did have to put this one lower on the list, but I still really did love this one. Uh, at number six is book one where it all starts, Addicted to You. I love this. I thought this was such a great introduction into the series. And honestly, I think this one even could be a little higher. This isn't like a definitive, my rankings could change over time. And I do think that this one could crawl up the list a little bit more, mostly because I just love where we start. And there's so much great stuff in this first book. And I love seeing Lily and Lo, their connection already building so early on in this series. So oh, I, I did love this one. Uh, number five is Feel the Fire, <laughs> Connor and Rose's second book. I loved it. Again, it did have a bit of a slow start, but once we got into it, I absolutely loved it. I cannot get enough of these two. I would read 10 books just specifically for Connor and Rose. Like, I love them. They're everything. Number four is Addicted After All. I thought this was kind of like the perfect bow wrapping up on Lily and Lowe's story, because even though we still saw them after the words, this was their kind of like final book. And I thought this was absolutely perfect. Again, I'm just like so proud of the two of these characters. They are my second favorite couple, even though like I really can't choose. It's hard because I love Lo and Lily and I love Daisy and Reich, but I do have to say there just is something for Lily and Lo that I, I just feel like such like a proud friend watching their ending in this one. Number three is Addicted For Now. I thought this was great. I loved getting Lo back from rehab and then really looking at him and Lily both struggling, like Lo struggling with being sober and Lily struggling with her sex addiction. And then that it's out, oh, oh my God, a bookmark. <laughs> and then that it's outed in this one. This was just like a really solid book overall. Number two, Hot House Flower. This book is fantastic. I loved everything about Daisy and Reich in this one. I loved the beginning. I loved the sneaking around. I loved the Paris riot. I loved them just like being able to go off on their own and like just really truly both decide that this is what they want. They're both very lonely people and to see them decide like fuck everyone else. We're gonna do what makes us happy because we're what makes each other happy. I loved it. And finally at number one, this fucking book. I don't feel like I really need to say a lot more because I already rambled, I think probably the longest about this book <laughs> than I did for any other book in this vlog. But Connor and Rose are next fucking level. I love them so much. I'm so connected with them. I thought this book was perfection. Like perfect. I wouldn't change a single thing about this book. Not a single fucking thing. It was so good and did so much for the series in Connor and Rose and I just loved it. That is this series. I'm so sad to be done with it, you guys. So I definitely am going to read their children's series. Um, I do think that the Ublog novel did a great job of setting up the kids and I am really excited to read those eventually. I do just think like I need a little bit of a break. I loved this series. I hope you guys loved this video and let me know down below your favorite couple, your rankings, any moments that you want to like comment on that maybe I missed along the way. And yeah, that is it. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you when I see you.